Shweb Station. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by that holy cross that have redeemed the world. My dear people, as I was going through this 12th station, I was struck by a message, which I know is a message for all of us. And what is it? Father Patrick, this I did for you. Go and do yourself for others. Father Patrick, this I did for you. Go and do the same for others. Why did Christ die on the cross? To give me salvation, to give you salvation, to save me from my sin and everlasting damnation, to open for me and you the gate of heaven, which was closed due to the disobedience of our first parents. Of course, we know the story of fall in the Genesis. Christ died for me and you to fulfill the will of God, his Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. And what is that will of God, the Father? Consummating the new covenant initiated by God, the Father, after the fall of our parents, God did not abandon us to die forever. Having expelled Adam and Eve from paradise, God began to initiate a plan to save humanity, and that came to consummation with the coming of Christ and death of Christ on the cross. To accomplish his mission on earth, that's part of why we are celebrating, and that mission is to give me and you salvation, especially those who believe. Because if I say no to the salvation, he cannot come, because he will not force me to pay for my sins. Because, because of our sins, because of the sin of our parents, we have been in debt. We have been enslaved. And then to pay for that, that's why Christ died. To give meaning to my own existence, to your own existence, of course, which he consummated with his resurrection. Because without that, our life means nothing. Why will I die for others? Why has Christ mandated me to die for others? To help others to gain God's salvation, the same salvation he has offered, because it is possible that my neighbor my friends, people around may be having one crisis or the other that may make them to forget. So my support to them emotionally, psychologically, physically, otherwise, can help. Can give them the sense of direction to look up to God, who is the author and finisher of our faith. To offer support to others, those in crisis, those in distress, see the pandemic in which we are. So many people are affected, and other crises in the world. People need my support. They need your support. And this support, sometimes I may think it is when I do so many great things. Hi, how are you doing? Sending off messages, even if I can't go, these are important. And then to help others also find meaning in their cross, in their suffering. Because sometimes if we don't offer it up, it is meaningless. Offering up their sufferings, their crises, their sorrows, what they go through. Then how can I die for others? We know Christ died for me and you by sacrificing the greatest treasure and what is that treasure? His life. And this he did to perfectly keep to the will of God the Father. Hence, he died for all of us. Then if I die for others, it must be also through the sacrifice. And what is that sacrifice? 
and that sacrifice I must offer following the footsteps of Christ, irrespective of anything, any position, any threats. Christ did not mind that. He got focused. He did not, he was not disoriented. He, he was focused, he faced his business. So despite what comes around me, I must not say not to sacrifice. So what am I sacrificing? What are you sacrificing? One, time. Time is money. I have my time. I would have used this time for other things, but I have the service of God and humanity is important. I can also offer myself as a human is also a resource. Because I'm here closer, I'm here helping that is support. I would have gone up. Ideas. Knowledge is power. Informing others. Of course, when I came to the United States, I, I got to know this land. If you see something, say something. And keep quiet. In the ideas, information, whatever we used to do to make people, to make things better. Not bad ones. Good. Then we talk of equipment or material. I have my clothes, I have my shoes, I have things around me, and I don't use them anymore. They don't belong to me. They belong to others who need them. There are people suffering elsewhere. Why not support? Why not donate? Why not help out? It doesn't mean anything to me, but it means something to people. Even my money is a resource. I can also support with money and all those things for the work of God in the parish and places for people who are suffering. But make sure you are doing it for the right intention. Make sure you don't give somebody that will eat the money or take it out. Follow that. My sacrificing or dying for others is sometimes followed with rejection. We need to know that. And that's why we see our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ was misunderstood by unbelievers. The Jews of the old who lacked faith, who regarded Christ as, as blaspheming against God, who regarded Christ as an offender of the law, who regarded Christ as corrupting the minds of the society, causing insurrection. He was misunderstood by even the Greek people of old because they were seeking for wisdom, they were seeking for knowledge. I can be misunderstood. You can be misunderstood if you are dying for others. Even for those people you are dying for, they can misunderstand you. They can tell stories about you. They can say so many things against you. Christ suffered all these things. That's what he tells me. And what, why do I say this? Because I can be misunderstood. Even if I'm offering my resources to help people, energy, my idea, my material, my money, my time, even my life, even my blood. Sometimes we are shedding the blood people don't see because of the crisis you get through in supporting even that. I want to tell us that Christ is still telling me and you. He did that to give our life meaning, to give us salvation. I need to do that also, to give my brother and my sister salvation or redemption, no matter what happens. So, can I say no to the life of sacrifice? The answer is no. I cannot say no to the life of sacrifice because I'm already called for that. Even from the time of our baptism, from the time of my vocation, from the time of your vocation, because we have our cause, various cause. Christ and Master did so, despite all odds, so I cannot say no, despite the opposition I can receive, despite the rejection, despite the hardships, despite the misunderstanding from others, including the people I die for. Saying no to the life of sacrifice will imply rejecting God's way for me and you. Had Christ said no because of the crisis he faced, the salvation would not have come to us. So we need to keep to the footstep of Christ. So I keep on and you keep on. That's what Christ tells us today. To the life of sacrifice, no matter what happens. 
God who has called me and you and has assigned us our missions, our duties, will not abandon us. He's always with us to support us. The master of the vineyard is there, looking, supporting. We may not even know, I may not even know. Even in the darkness, even in the dark situation, he's there showing me the light. I remember one of the songs we use in the Stations of the Cross. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when I come into your kingdom. So I'm told, I'm reminded that I cannot be remembered unless I go with life of sacrifice, following the footsteps of Christ. So I pray you, I pray me, I pray ourselves to understand this and take this to heart. A life of sacrifice without a sacrifice is a contradiction. So if we mean to live the life of sacrifice after the life of Christ, we must follow him. We pray for this position to God's grace because the grace of God is always with us. That's why he has not abandoned and he will not abandon us. We pray for the disposition to God's grace as we praise the blessed Trinity. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.